Coming up, one year mark. President Joe Biden makes a surprise visit to Ukraine one year after Russia's invasion. We'll talk to some kids inside Ukraine to find out what they're going through. Also, honoring a legend as Black History Month comes to a close, we're going to tell you about one aviation pioneer and how her legacy is soaring to new heights. Then, Paw Patrol. Instead of medicine, this team is delivering hugs and comfort to kids in Georgia. We're there with details. Plus, inspiring kids. One 12 year old girl is helping to brighten the lives of kids in foster care. When I heard that some foster kids might have to leave in the middle of the night, I thought that it might be scary because as a kid in my own home, I was scared of the dark. And so with a new nightlight in that new home where they may not know anybody, it would help them feel more safe and comfortable. And Super Mario, the famous video game, comes to life, putting kids right in the middle of all the action. This place is awesome. It was extremely fun because I got, I got to play Mario Kart in real life. I think I'm really in the game. We'll take you inside the new theme park that just opened. This is NBC Nightly News. Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It is great to be with you. I'm on the West Coast this week, coming to you from Universal Studios Hollywood, a division of our parent company, NBC Universal. And if you or your parents are fans of Super Mario, then you are in for a treat. We're going to bring you the details a little later on. Also ahead, we'll introduce you to a group of remarkable kids who just took part in the New York City Braille Challenge. We'll explain what that's about. Plus, our picture of the week is from Colorado. We can't wait to share more about this baby. But first, we begin on a serious note with the war in Ukraine. As we just mentioned, President Biden made a historic trip this week to Ukraine and met with President Zelensky one year after Russia's invasion. The war has been hard on, of course, everyone there, but especially Ukrainian children. We get more now from our good friend Richard Engel. And kids, you may want to grab a parent or grown-up to watch in case you have any questions. One year ago, Russia invaded Ukraine in the east of Europe. Russian President Vladimir Putin claims the country is really part of Russia, even though Ukraine has been independent for 30 years and wants to stay that way. Like all wars, it's been especially hard for children. To escape Russian bombs and missiles, two million Ukrainian children were taken out of the country to places with routines they didn't know. For the children who stayed in Ukraine, home has changed too. Much of the time now, they live underground. Some sleep in subway stations where it's safer from the attacks above. Occasionally, there's entertainment. But celebrations are rare. There are people inside here. More common are long hours in basements with little or no power and no internet. Only rarely do they come out for school. Daria is nine. Last night there was shelling very close to our house. I was in bed and very scared, she says. When you hear the shooting and you hear the explosions, what do you do? Do you cover your ears? Do you think about something else? I close my ears and lay in bed like this, she says. I close my eyes and go under the blanket to protect myself in case there's shrapnel. Sometimes I go under the bed. Do you have enough food at home? Yes, yes. Yes, when the humanitarian aid comes, there's canned meat or rice, and it's enough for us, she says. Stas is 10. What do you miss most about peace? I miss my cousin, he says. He's in Poland now. He left on the first day of the war. Is he your best friend? He's my best brother. The children love school. It's an oasis from the war. What's it like to be a child in Ukraine right now? I feel so sorry for them, she says. Why is this happening to them? Kids run and play. Our kids have to hide in the basement all the time. Who here wants this war to end very quickly? Don't you both hands up. Everyone's got both hands up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. After school, children go home for lunch and back into hiding. 
Richard, thanks so much. And we should note that people of all ages around the world continue to show support for the people of Ukraine, including some of our nightly news Kids Edition viewers who have held fundraisers and donated items to provide some comfort for Ukrainian children. I know they are appreciative of your generosity. All right, let's switch gears now and head to Atlanta, where one very special program is helping kids in the hospital find comfort and joy thanks to some four-legged friends. Our pal Kristen Dahlgren has the story. Uno is making his rounds. Knock, knock. David Craig, you have a visitor. Instead of medicine, he's prescribing a dose of comfort. It's our very own Paw Patrol. Uno is a facility dog who's part of the Canines for Kids program at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, the first of its kind in the country. One of the most important things that they do is try and help our patients cope with being in the hospital. Reggie is one of our facility dogs who work alongside of people like me, an employee of Children's, to help our patients reach their goals, whether that's getting out of bed after having surgery, or helping you know reduce some of the stress that they might have when it's associated with a illness or being in the hospital so our dogs can be a huge part of their stay there are 14 facility dogs on the team each dedicated to a specific unit it can be kind of scary being away from home so having a dog alongside of them for those tests or for their teaching or education learning about that new diagnosis is such an important part of their job. And there has been research that shows that someone coming in with a uniform, if a dog's alongside of them, that the level of stress is lessened. The dogs are specially trained from birth. One thing that differentiates therapy dogs from facility dogs is that therapy dogs aren't taught from birth like these dogs. So they learn what it's like to walk on the slippery floors of a hospital. They learn what the different sounds are, like they might hear of an IV machine that's beeping. Um, so that way when they're ready to come to work after about two years, those things won't be new to them. Considered to be part of the staff, these canines even have their own badges. I forget how much she loves you, Sharon. It's like making Flo's day. 13-year-old <laughs> Sharon is celebrating her birthday here in the hospital with Flo by her side. It's my birthday, but like, she just made my whole day. I kind of know her from when I was little. I've been coming here a lot, and she's kind of like one thing I look forward to. Always a great time when I see her. Flo is kind of like my best friend, because every time I see her, she's just like, makes my day and I don't have to be here and, and be sad I just like think of her. Our dogs help our, our kids feel better and get better. I've gotten to see their heart rates improve and then get up and around to play with the dogs. It just makes them get better quicker. Helping them recover and providing a sense of home. Aries is on hand to assist patients like Sebastian to walk. Aries helps them encourage kids to walk. And Children's even has a new pen pause program, giving patients the chance to exchange letters with their furry friends. David has a handmade one ready to go. This is my pen pause to Una, and it says, Dear Una, I would like to go on a walk with you again. These dogs here in the hospital that are trained to work bring joy to these kids, and it really provides a great distraction for them. It's kind of like exciting, and I like feel so calm and happy. It just kind of makes my day. And it's just what the dog tur ordered. Kristen, thanks very much. Let's turn now to our Inspiring Kids series. And this week, we introduce you to one sixth grader from Arkansas who is helping to brighten the lives of kids in foster care. 12 year old Amelia Lissaway has a passion for volunteering. I love volunteering, and I've been volunteering my entire life. And it was her desire to help others that gave Amelia a bright idea, quite literally. When I heard that some foster kids might have to leave in the middle of the night, I thought that it might be scary because as a kid in my own home, I was scared of the dark. And so with a new nightlight in that new home where they may not know anybody, it would help them feel more safe and comfortable. In 2018, Amelia started collecting nightlights for kids in foster care in Arkansas. 
Foster care is a temporary living situation for children whose parents are unable to care for them. I went to my school counselor and I pitched this idea that every kid could bring in a dollar for hat day and then we would use all of the money to buy nightlights to donate to foster kids. From there, things blossomed. Okay, do those in there. We started getting a lot of donations and became an official nonprofit. 15, 16, 17. With the help of donations and volunteers, Amelia's organization, Lissa Way's Lights, now has donated more than 15,000 night lights to foster care organizations in all 50 states and nine countries. I know that I'm helping some people in the world that really need some help. They also hold in-person events for some kids. There we go. And the sixth grader even has a team of kid ambassadors. So each of them will get 25 nightlights and then they'll make some handwritten cards and then we also have some pre-made cards so that they can put these as well as their handmade cards into the boxes. It's a way to get the younger generation involved with foster care so that when they grow up, they're more excited to help. It takes kind of the mind of a child to sometimes say, I'm gonna help foster kids by letting them be less scared of the dark. One girl shining a light on an important cause. A nightlight is a sign of faith and hope in that dark situation where you may be scared. What kind of led me to create Listwise Lights was one of our family mottos, and it's find something you're good at and use it to make the world a better place. Well, speaking of inspiration, the K through 12 New York City Braille Challenge just wrapped up recently. The competition featured over 50 blind and visually challenged students. Did you know that Braille is a system of raised dots that can be read with the fingers of those who are blind or have low vision? Adam, who is 17 and a high school senior, won first place in the varsity category, which is how they classify high school students. Meanwhile, 15-year-old Lucy received an honorable mention in the same group. And meet 10-year-old Hao Wen Dang. He was the top winner in what they call the freshman class. He's a four-time Braille champion with three wins across three continents. Congratulations to everyone. Meanwhile, as Black History Month comes to a close this week, we wanted to take a few moments to tell you about a female pioneer who continues to soar to new heights in hopes of inspiring a new generation. Here again is our friend Kristen Dahlgren. Bessie Coleman was a pioneer. She was the very first African-American and Native American woman to earn her pilot's license. Born in Texas back in 1892, Bessie applied to flight schools across the country, but was denied because of her race and gender. But Bessie didn't give up. Determined to fly, Bessie went to France, where she attended flight school and received her pilot's license in 1921. Bessie soared to new heights, becoming a popular stunt flyer at air shows and earning the nickname Brave Bessie. Unfortunately, she died in 1926 at the age of 34 in a plane accident. But Bessie's legacy lives on today. You know, she wasn't in the history books. No one knew about her. Uh, they knew about Amelia Earhart, but they didn't know about Bessie Coleman. Her great niece, Gigi Coleman, has spent years teaching people about Bessie, especially kids. She wanted to open an aviation program to teach African Americans how to fly airplanes. She didn't want anybody to have to go through what she went through. Inspired by her great aunt, Gigi founded the Bessie Coleman Aviation All Stars a nonprofit organization in Chicago that teaches kids about careers in aviation and STEM. Our whole mission is to help disadvantaged youth think about careers in aviation. And just last month, Barbie and American Airlines announced the launch of the Bessie Coleman doll as part of its Inspiring Women series in honor of Bessie's January birthday and Black History Month. Barbie and American Airlines have teamed up to celebrate Bessie Coleman's birthday. To have a dial is something that I just can't believe. It's an achievement that I'm so happy. And I think that this achievement will make other people know about Bessie. When they play when I'm Bessie, they'll look at her and say, wow, she is such an inspiration. She's an inspiration to me that I can do whatever I want to. It doesn't matter what background or where I come from or anything about my family history. I'll be just like Bessie. I won't take no for an answer. Because like Bessie says, every no 
brings you closer to a yes. A woman who broke barriers, soaring to new heights once again. All right, Kristen, thank you very much. Time now for our picture of the week. And for that, we head to Colorado, where the Denver Zoo just recently welcomed a baby two-toed sloth to their family. Parents Charlotte and Elliot couldn't be prouder, and zoo officials say both baby and mom are doing well. Did you know a sloth is one of the slowest mammals on the planet, and they spend most of their time in trees? The sloths are probably saying, we're not slow, we're, we're just careful, right? Finally, Super Nintendo World just opened its doors here at Universal Studios Hollywood, bringing the Super Mario video game literally to life and putting kids and grown-ups right in the middle of the action. Let's get details now from our good friend and Nintendo Super fan, Gotti Schwartz. Super Mario, the video game beloved by millions over four decades now brought to life in vivid reality. When you guys came through the castle and you saw this, what'd you think? Amazing. I think, <laughs> Amazing. I think I'm really in the game. This is Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood. This place is awesome. Super Mario's been with my childhood, me and my siblings just childhood. My parents also used to play it. That's why we came here. We wanted to experience it like in real life. It puts Super Mario fans right inside the Mushroom Kingdom, sweeping them into a 360-degree world with Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach as they take on the evil Bowser and compete with fellow players for victory. Who is this for? You know, it's really for everybody. I mean, it's been really rewarding. I've seen kids come out at six years old, and they come out in the land, and they scream. And I've seen 50-year-olds <laughs> come out and scream. It was extremely fun because I got, I got to play Mario Kart in real life. And here we are, the main event, Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. With tech so advanced, it has never been seen before at a US theme park until now. Let's go! The Mario Kart ride is quite the thrill. It was spectacular. I, I mean, it literally feels like you're in an actual Mario Kart game. The interactive ride combines technology and the real world, putting the game right in the middle of your path as you try to beat Team Bowser and win the Golden Cup. I'm excited because I really like Mario Kart, and it's really like thrilling and fun when you race, and it gets you like pumped up. Universal Studios says the ride is designed for people of all sizes. And speaking of interactive, you can also purchase a power-up band that syncs with the free app, allowing you to collect coins and keep score like in the game. Mamma mia! Whenever you find like a block or something, you have to hit it with your band and, and then you can get points. This land, a treat for Super Mario fans of all ages. Like my mind is blown, like I recognize so much things. So it's almost like you've been here before, but you've never been here yes. before. Growing up, I, I would see videos about it, especially the one in Tokyo. And especially about the movie, it's very exciting. A magical world where players literally become part of the game. It's a really fun experience, and like, I learned a lot about Mario that I never knew even existed in Mario. All right, Gotti, thanks so much. We should mention again that Universal Studios Hollywood is a division of our parent company, NBC Universal. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at Nightly Kids. And just a program note, you can catch Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listing for the time in your area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.